Welcome to the Mind and My Creative Business Podcast, the number one podcast for creative entrepreneurs to focus on strategy, structure, and self-development. I am your host, Ron Ironically Jr. And I am your host, Shy Speaks. And per usual, I am excited about today's episode. Not because we are here in a virtual space again, just Ron and I. It's because we're going to be introducing two very prominent, I'm talking about beyond eight-figure creative entrepreneurs right here on this podcast. We're going to welcome them to talk about personal branding versus company branding and why that should matter for you, right? Everybody's talking about go get the legacy, generational wealth, start you a company. And as you're starting your company, you're like, oh, I got to build out this brand. And then it's like, okay, I'm a personal brand. And then it's like, okay, so we have Ron on here, who's a brand strategist. And we have me. We're going to talk about how like structure goes into all of that at the same time. And it's going to be good. I'm telling you, personal brand versus company brand. You'll find out where you fit in the mix. And this is going to be really, really good uh, because sometimes they parallel and sometimes they don't. And yeah. Right. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, you know, as we're talking about, you know, personal brand, right? Because as a creative preneur, I'm hoping that you understand and know that you are a brand, right? Whether you're going to brand yourself from a personal standpoint or you're going to develop and build a company and you, you're you going to have a, a company brand. Either way, in order for you to fully monetize who you are as a creative preneur, you got to understand that piece, right? So, yeah, we're going to lean into that whole personal and company. So when we talk about these things, right, you got to understand, number one, regardless of if you're doing personal or if you're doing uh, a company, you have to have like a core values, right? Like that's like that's what you're going to do. You're going to build your core values around either right from a personal standpoint what are your personal values right so you're building that brand around your personal values or if you're doing it from a business standpoint then you're going to build it around a mission and don't get me wrong both have a mission but it's kind of like like i said the personal piece is built around the individual like if i have a personal brand my personal brand is built around ronald gregory lee jr <laughs> right but i have what's the irony right and i have you know, my West Irony Productions, and that has its own set of values, though they may reflect mine to a degree, but it, they're, they're totally different. OK, so that's kind of like that that separation and that difference. Right. And the reason why we want to unpack that is because as you're building out these brands and we're saying you're like, ah, because one of them may have these this mission and it's customer base and its target market and its look and its feel and its whole way of operating while your personal brand has an entirely different look, feel, and the way it, again, could be similar, yeah. but oftentimes it is not. And again, when we introduce these guests, I'm talking about beyond eight figure guests, yeah. you're going to see what we're talking about. In fact, are we ready to introduce the first one or we, do we think we need to? No, I think we're good. I think we're going, I think we're going good because I think once we introduce this guest, they'll be able to see what we're talking about. And, and you know, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, and introduce right. our, yeah. our first guest company uh, brand is built around a business mission. Personal brand is built around a personal ethos. But introducing, ladies and gentlemen, none other uh, than the creative extraordinaire himself. Uh, if if he were here, this is how I would uh, introduce it. Mr. Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Bring him in with such fanfare. If you do not know who Steve Jobs is, uh, Steve Jobs was formerly a CEO uh, at Apple. And he's not just formerly a CEO. He actually has transitioned on from this life to the next. Uh, but but tell him a little bit more about Steve Jobs, just in case somebody yeah. doesn't understand. No, like, well, Steve Jobs, he was the the, the founder, right, of C, uh, at the, C, the founder and CEO of Apple, right? So anybody okay. that has a iPhone, a MacBook, iMac, any of these things. Um, he is the creative genius behind that. And what was so dope about Steve, right, is that he he wasn't the one that necessarily made or created these things. He had the idea, but he was able to put his persona, right, who Steve Jobs was 
he was able to put these into these product into these products, right? He took the most complex of things and he wanted to make it simple, right? That's what he was very, very big on. It's like let's let's simplify this, not only the product, but even this the 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 packaging and the experience and all that. And we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Um, and just you know how he was able to take who he was personally, right? But put it into this company. And like you said, Steve hasn't been here in, in quite some time, right? He's transitioned. For a little while and the, the company is still there right but because the company is following the mission and vision that he set out that he put in place that was the foundation of his company's brand they're able to still be a billion dollar business right so that's beyond eight figures what, what's what's yes. a billion <laughs> i told you i was gonna be beyond and a lot of times people don't realize so you know you say he's a founder Right. He was a co-founder because there's another uh, another guy that's there. The other guy is more the computer engineering design. Yeah, Wozniak. Yeah. Wozniak. They think that Steve Jobs was also probably some type of tech guy, but he really, really was a creative by all stretch of the imagination. Tell us a little bit more about what made him a creative, and then we'll talk about what he did at Apple. Right. So he was real big into music. Um, believe it or not, when he, he you know he was a college dropout, but some of the things that he kind of linked into, he was real big on calligraphy. So one of the reasons why we have different fonts and things like that at our disposal is because of Steve Jobs. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like just something like that is 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 where he was like, okay, no, nah, I, I want I I I just don't want this basic font, right? But 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 that came from his calligraphy background, though. So he was he was familiar with doing different fonts and things that he learned calligraphy and he brought that into what he wanted to do with apple you know what i'm saying um so yeah he's like the creator from a sense where i can take an idea i can take a vision and i can expound upon it i can bring i can create something out of nothing so even though like i said wozniak he was the the engineer behind it he was the technical guy behind it he saw something in wozniak and was like oh no let's listen no this can be what you're doing, this can be the next best thing. This can be a, put put a computer in every home, right? That he so he took that and saw that as a visionary. So I, I believe you know visionaries are are creatives, right? Because you you're creating something out of nothing. You're creating something that didn't exist, um, and that's the essence and the epitome of who, who Steve Jobs was. Wow, and 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 people sleep on the fact that, like you said, calligraphy that that's like a whole swagged out way of of fonts right yeah. so there especially you think about back in that time you had like it wasn't even just times new roman it was like another basic fun i forgot what it was but like it's like no i want the user to experience something different yeah therein lies uh, a word that he introduced with the with the apple concept uh tell them about that you want the, uh, the think different campaign that they had right so yeah. And even in that, right? So when he came up with the Think Different campaign, like he had people that were saying, no, we can't say that because it's not grammatically correct. Like, no, it's, it should be Think Differently. But he was like, no, he was like, Think Different. Like he, and that, he, he, was, he was able to build even that movement around that whole concept and idea of Think Different, right? I'm, and if you think different, you'll be different. So he created this whole movement because, I mean, it, and anybody that knows Apple users is, is almost kind of like cultish. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but th that was very intentional. Like he, he wanted to build a brand. Right. That where people felt a sense of community, where they felt as though they belong, like they felt special and valuable and they felt like they were rebels and what you know what I'm saying? Like. They had this TV ad back in the 80s that, that they had put on uh, during the Super Bowl. And it was very uh, like us against the machine type thing. Like we're fighting corporate. Right. But they were very intentional to to push that because they wanted people that bought their products because, you know, they weren't they, they were they were like the underdogs. They, they had just a small piece of the market share. You had other companies that were bigger than that were doing, you know, more massive numbers. Right. So they was like, OK, how can we once again speak to our particular target market and target audience um, and draw them out so we can get a piece of that market share? And over time, it definitely grew, grew and things like that. Uh, but, yeah, that whole thing different was that was that was that was genius. That was right. genius. 
what makes it genius is because for him, it was, I want people to think something different. I want them to understand this innovative approach that we're taking to technology. I want them to understand. I want them to feel a certain way. And that is very important when we're talking about branding. Yeah. A lot of times people are like, probably by now you're, you're in this episode, you're listening, like they're talking about all this stuff. I thought brand was going to be about like, yeah, we'll get to that. We're here. A brand is also uh, how you make people feel. Right. And so, for Steve Jobs and for Apple, it was all about feel like how you unbox the box, how the box looks, how you walk in the store. How does that feel like all of these things are very important, but you first have to think differently as a as a company internally to then get everybody in the company to start thinking, wow, how can I create this experience that makes people feel like they belong? feel like they yeah. belong. In other words, feel like you belong. I want you to feel a certain way when you open a box. I want you to feel a certain way when you come in here. So as you are, again, we said this episode is going to be how this should pertain to you. So you're working on your personal brand or you're working on a on a company brand and you're 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 trying to figure out how to make these distinctive. You want to ask yourself, um when it comes to my customers mm-hmm. and the experience that I want them to have. How do I want them to think and mm-hmm. feel uh, mm-hmm. when coming in contact with my brand? Right. How do I want people to think and feel when coming in contact with my brand? Right. That's a very important question. No, definitely. Because and then be mindful of how when, when they come in contact with your brand. Right. The first time that they may experience you, it may be via an ad. Right. It may be via, depending on if you have brick or mortar. It may be via your your store. It may be be via a product or service or whatever the case may be. So you're thinking about, okay, when they experience my product, how do I want them to feel? What do I want them to think? When they open that product, if it's a physical product, how do I want them to think? How do I want them to feel? If it's a service, right? Um, When we get on the call, how do I want them to think and feel when we're on that call, right? Like all these different things that go into that branding process that a lot of times us as creatives, we may not be aware of, but no, these are this is very, very key. Like, yes, we understand the color, we understand the logo, and that's a piece of it. But even that, even when we opened it, we talked about core values. Like, what does the brand value? Whether it's once again the company or or the or the person or the person. And then from there, how do I want them to feel? Um, how do I want them to think and things like that? So yeah. you know, the oftentimes I hear people say, Man, I need to, I'm gonna do a rebrand. Mm -hmm. When they say they're doing a rebrand, they're talking about the colors. And there is, like you say, a psychology that goes psychology that goes into the colors. Right. And so, yeah, certain colors make you feel a certain way. But what Ron is talking about is how do I want them to feel along every touch point? Sure. When they see my logo, how do I want them to feel? Sure. When I see my my brand's colors, how do I want them to feel? But on the phone. When they get the email, after they get the email, when they get their product delivered to them, like, is it just a product coming to them? Do I have some other stuff in the bag? When they yeah. open it, do it smell a certain way? Like all of those things go into brand. These, now we're talking about going beyond the colors. We're not saying that the colors don't matter of how your brand's going to look when you start the brand or when you rebrand. But we want you to think beyond the brand, yeah. uh, especially if this was like, <clears throat> Okay, we go into like a service based business. Right. So we talked about perhaps it could be a product that they get. Maybe you got a a, a, a sweater or a robe that you, you have a fancy robe company and you deliver it to them. You want them to feel like, oh, I want to put this on and plush and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's a product. But ultimately, I think it, it shines brighter what we're talking about when it comes to branding in the service industry. So when we talk about service industry, you you think about like, OK. How do I want people to feel about this service? I want mm-hmm. I want them to feel like it's fast. Do I want the experience to feel like it's luxury? Right. Do I want it to feel convenient and affordable? Okay, fast, co- convenient, and affordable. That's that's a that's a certain feeling, and it's an yeah. experience. So there's a whole thing that goes with that. But then there's like, do I want it to feel like luxury and personalized, and maybe even a little costly? Because sometimes you want things to feel costly because, you know, people have a little bit more skin in the game. Right. 
And so I want them to feel like, man, I just really put a little something out here. Yeah. It's a little bit further invested into the experience. So yeah. we see that carried out in investment. I mean, I'm sorry, in, in service-based businesses. So, okay, explain that, what that would look like in the food industry, Ron. So perfect example, right? Everybody's, I'm sure, been to a McDonald's at one you know, point in stage in their life. So we know we know what to expect going into McDonald's, right? It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be fast, right? So we know that, like I said, if you look at the colors, yellow and red, yellow, red, and white, yellow and red, red is like it is it, it, it communicates communicates fast, <clears throat> right? So um when you think about McDonald's compared to something like a Ruth Chris, right? You you look at Ruth Chris and they're the way that they brand it. You don't expect that to be something that's that you're gonna go in fast, right? They're, they you're gonna go in. Do you expect to sit down, right? It's, it's, it's somewhat of a luxury. It's more of a higher end, more of a luxury meal. You you, you don't expect them. You're not looking for a dollar menu, right? When you go on the roof, Chris, right? When you go to McDonald's, you're looking for the dollar menu. So once again, it's how how they've set these different things up, and you can expect a different experience. And McDonald's because it's fast, because it's it's, it's more convenient, because um. You know, you see a dollar menu and whatnot and certain words that they put, like though the word value in itself intrinsically does not mean cheap. But when we hear value in the sense of like food, it it, 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 it communicates cheap. Right. So that's a part of the branding value. The value menu is the value menu. You're thinking, OK, I'm going to spend a dollar or two on this menu. You go to Ruth Chris, you're not expecting a value menu. You you're just expecting. have the menu. <laughs> you're, and you're expecting, you're going to hear words like quality. Exactly. Right? Because the quality of our meats or the quality of our, our vegetables, how they were uh, formed, you know, brought from here and locally right. sourced and all this kind of stuff. You're hearing yeah. quality. Right. So, and you hear about a chef. You might have a chef special, the chef special today, right? You hear words like that. You don't hear nothing about a chef when you walk into McDonald's, Right. right. So even just just those those simple nuances or whatnot, it's it was it was again the psychology is training your brain. Your brain is thinking something different and it's expecting something different compared to McDonald's. The, the cooks in the back. When you hear cook compared to chef, totally different thing. Right. And I and I say this because I think as creatives are working on building their business, mm -hmm. all too often it's like, I don't want it to feel like yeah. It's okay. Do you want it to feel a luxury? Right. It's okay. It's not, it's not, it's nothing wrong. It's not a bad, it's not a, it's like, it's not good or bad. Yeah. McDonald's and Ruth Chris are both successful business yeah. as it relates yeah. to being in the food industry, according to what, however they define success. Both well known. That's probably why you know what we're talking about right now. Right. But they are offering two different experiences based on probably the, the founder's values or the yeah. company, the, the mission. Yeah. Right. So there's a mission here for this this particular business. The, the it's a company mission here. It's moving beyond just what the original founder wanted. Right. The original founder probably just want to make some hamburgers. But now it's like the business's mission is to get people fast, affordable, uh, quick, uh, mm -hmm. convenient food. So that's our mission. So everything we do is built around trying to service that from, the, right. you know, from every experience along the way from the ad to the in-person, et cetera. And again, these are the things you have to think about versus the business mission, the company's mission at Ruth Chris is different. Our mission, we're trying to, at, at Ruth Chris, we're trying to give people a quality experience, a personalized, customized experience, a sit down, relax, ambiance. Uh, you see all of those things is what we're on a mission to do. Yeah. And, celebrating and here. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, and, and even that, even as as we're talking about these these different brands, these different brands actually were at one point they weren't, they weren't personal brands, but they were at least named after people. Like I don't know who a Ruth Chris is, but that that's a name, right? We know that McDonald's that's a name. We know Ray Kroc, you know, brought the company or kind of, I'll say, creatively took the company from the McDonald's brothers, right? But that that was a name, right? Mm -hmm. um, but these companies are once again existing without us even knowing who these people are, right? And they're they've way surpassed what they've ever could have done 
if it was a personal brand. And we're not saying that the personal brand, because Steve Jobs had a personal brand. People were aware of who Steve Jobs was. But once again, he was let go by Apple back in the in, in the mid 80s. Right. And the only to be he came back. They brought him back in later on, years later, years later. Right. But, but the company was still able to function, even though he wasn't there. So that's kind of what we're saying. Like a personal brand, the brand is contingent upon me. And if I'm out of the picture, then there's really no brand. But when, if you build a company, right, even though if, if you have a forward facing CEO or something like that, the company's still going to function around because it has its own set of values and things like that. It's important for us to break that down because at the end of the day, the people who are at McDonald's, like they were creatives. They probably were creating a a very new food pro product, right? Right. Uh, the people, Ruth or Chris or whoever, were pioneering in the industry, trying to come up with a steak and trying to come up with a, they were creatives. Yeah. And so yeah. I think it's important though, but they, they, they branded a certain way. Okay. I, I said I was going to actually keep it moving and bring in two. I said I was going to bring another person in, right? But before I bring that person in, you know how it is on these podcasts. You know, we got to pay the bills. <laughs> so I'm going to actually introduce that second person. We're going to take branding and personal branding, com company brand even further. Like, you don't want to miss this part because we're going to talk about how operations plays a part in. We talked about experience and values, but we want to talk about this. Um, okay, we'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> What's the irony? <laughs> it's because it's us in different color clothing. I mean, listen, we've been doing a lot of talking and we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to make a statement as well. Because we've seen people make statements with their athletic apparel. We've even seen people make statements as entrepreneurs. But one thing I haven't seen is somebody make a statement as a creative entrepreneur. So right. what right. we've done is we have given you an opportunity to make a statement as a creative entrepreneur. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So if they want to make sure that they're rocking that creative preneur gear, where can they go get that? You can go get that gear from what's the irony.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I well, always man. love it. I yeah. love it. I love that particular commercial because it's us, you know, it's like, wait a minute, what happened? Yeah, we're giving you a commercial. Make sure you head over to mmcb.com, right? And um, I'm sorry, I'm minding my creative business podcast, mmcbpodcast.com. And um, Matter of fact, go to our Instagram, follow us, then hit the link in our bio. It'll take you directly to links to buy that merch that we were just talking about. So you can rock that. Look, mine and my creative business podcast. If you're tuning in visually, you see what Ron is doing. <laughs> if not, head over to the Instagram. Now, I am excited to introduce this next person. Ron, you excited? No, definitely. He's, he's definitely one of my favorite uh, creative preneurs. Um, yeah, so yeah, he, he's somebody that started off as a animator. And listen, he wasn't even that good of an animator. <laughs> right? He was he was good enough, but he wasn't he wasn't great, but he was he was a visionary. See, I love I love visionaries. So yeah. um we're gonna bring this next visionary to the stage. I'm sure everybody's encountered this man's visions in and in, in, at some point. And in, in life in, in some capacity, right? So bring it to the stage. We want to bring the one and the only Walt Disney. <laughs> yeah, Walt no. Disney in here. The yeah. reason why we bring in Walt Disney is because I believe that brand can be uh, broken up simply into uh, experience and operations. Mm -hmm. That's that's I mean, we we got we have all these other things that we say. But so far, we talked about experience. Right. Now we need to talk about how operation goes into branding. And that's my kind of carrying on. And, and shout out to Walt Disney for, for making my points so easy to convey. Let's get into the fact that Walt Disney, we know from the, the TV shows, the movies, the films, the cartoons, the all of that, sing-alongs. Right. We know Walt Disney from those things. But Walt Disney didn't write everything that we say see right, right. there's a there's right. a group of people 
who create what comes out of Disney. In fact, we don't call it Walt Disney. Now we just say Disney. Disney. But Disney was built out of Walt Disney, which is a person who probably had his own personal brand in some regard at some point. But the the business model, the mission of Disney, the company, became a whole different thing. And so I like that one because the earlier one, Steve Jobs had his own thing. He was he was he had his own personal vibe, which is a little bit different from the Apple side. Mm-hmm. Whereas Walt Disney is more of like a more, where you see the personal brand and the company brand kind of merged into one, and then mm-hmm. eventually over time taking on their own separate identity, probably. But Walt Disney is also known for the like Disney World, okay. Right the music parks right so let's talk about how he took operations and how uh, his concept and approach to operations ties into the brand of like disney world go ahead Ron. Give, give me some, so, give me some so, you know he, he was already successful with with films and everything like that so he wanted to do he wanted to do this park right he wanted to do an amusement park right disneyland was was his first theme park Everybody was telling them, no, that's a bad idea. Why you want to do amusement parks? Amusement parks, they're filthy. They're disgusting, right? So in his mind, he was like, it ain't. It don't have to be, though, right? Like, yes, I hear y'all, but my vision, I got a different vision for it, right? We are going to make a, a amusement park, a theme park, but it's going to be clean, right? It's going to be some place where it's, 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 it's family friendly. It's this warm, welcoming environment. And he put systems and things in place in order f- for that to be into insured, like for that to happen, right? He would go to a hot dog stand, right? And he would order a hot dog. And he, as he, he would walk and he would see, okay, where, where he stopped eating that hot dog is where he would put a trash can, right? Because he knew that, once again, people would throw their trash down. So he put things and systems in place to where, okay, that's not going to happen. All right. So that's how much of a visionary he was. And he was like, OK, no, I'm gonna make it clean. He just didn't say I'm gonna make it clean. No, he was like, no, we're going to put things in place so that we ensure that it's clean. You muted. Uh Oh, my bad. Uh Oh, here we go. Here we go. That right there. So when we talk about brand and operations being branding, people be like, no, no, Sha, I don't know. I think you just like that systems and structures <laughs> and processes stuff too much. No. Mm-hmm. Disney World wouldn't be Disney World if it didn't run the way it was run. The, yeah. ex- the experience that's there is, yeah, it's how it makes you feel, but like you said, there are systems, there are processes in place. So even there's a trash system where the trashes are low, the trash cans are located ever so many steps so that it mm-hmm. takes away from your desire to want to drop trash anywhere. Like yeah. that's, a, that's a trash system. Then there is um, the, the the greeting team. Right. I think that's just kind of experience, but it's also like where they're stationed at, where 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 they are, where they kind of can be serviced. They could be serviced as like informational to a degree. You know where you are based on what you're seeing. Um, because that is, uh, yeah, it's still in a certain, okay, I want you to have this feeling, but what am I doing to make sure you have this feeling? Right. I have people stationed ever so often. Then there are the accommodations. It's a trip. You want to go on a trip. Like, oh, it's a big deal to say, where y'all went? Oh, we went to Disney World. People are like, what? Right. Because you know, like, you probably spent some money on that. But you also got this experience that was probably like no other. But the experience was anchored by how the accommodations need to look as well. Yep. The accommodations have to be clean a certain way. There's a certain routine about how, how often we're going to come in to clean those things, how it's going to look like. All of that ties in and goes hand in hand. Yeah. Ron. Um, Ron, you were telling me about um, like the detail. Mm-hmm. There's a certain level of detail because you wrote you you read a book, right? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, how to be like what? Um, and in this in this book, they had mentioned this 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 part where they had this castle, and the, the, the castle's probably still there. 
Um, but it was grass in front of the castle. But they noticed that the grass was getting worn out because people was walking on the grass to take photos in front of this castle. Right. So the people was like, OK, we'll put a fence around it. Walt was like, no, we're not going to put a fence around it. Let's put a walkway there and then let's put a sign here saying this is the best place to take photos. Right. So just something that simple is like, OK, yeah, the grass is being worn out. I want it to look pretty. But OK, if, if, the, if the people are wanting to take photos here, let's just simply put a walkway, put a sign there. And now people are taking these photos and this is it's, it's enhancing the experience right now. They're doing what they already want to do, but now we're encouraging them to do it. Right. So that just once again is going back to and leaning into that experience to where, OK, I'm going to ensure that you have a great experience based off of what what values we have in place. Right. And, and then not only are there values there, there are. There's an approach. There's yeah. a. There's a system here. There's a process here. People are going to take photos. Let's create what? Photo stations. Mm -hmm. Photo stations is a big deal. Anybody who's into events, event spaces or event planning, wedding coordination, they understand that there's a whole operations to make how, to make the event flow and have a feng shui. And sometimes people need things to do while they're waiting. So while they're waiting, hmm. I can create a photo station and that helps me control the flow of traffic, mm -hmm. right? People are walking yep. as they're walking. I want them walking this way, pathways, all of that goes into uh, logistics, right? That, that's the logistics of the personnel. So again, like we said earlier, these are the type of things we want you to be thinking about when you, when you are thinking about your brand, whether you're working on the business brand um, that's built around a mission, or are you currently working on a personal brand that's built around your personal ethos and your values? At the end of the day, how how do I need to operate so that mm -hmm. people can get that feeling that I was we, they were asking about earlier? I wanted it to be luxury. I wanted it to feel customized. You wanted it to feel like whatever, or did you want it to be fast? Did you want it to be affordable? Did you want it to be amazing? Whatever it is that you said you wanted it to be. What type of things do I need to implement on the back end? Now, for a theme park, it's, it's trash stations and placing people here and there, making sure the accommodations are suitable a certain way, making sure the photo stations are here. But for you, it may be something different. What type of systems or processes do I need to put in place so that I can deliver? Like, Because that's what the brand is going to be. People yeah. are going to remember you. The brand is how you made people feel based on what they experienced and and yeah okay experience but like the the experience is only anchored by how things run operationally i'll give you a perfect example if for example you run a service-based business and you're like okay i want it to feel luxury and i want it to feel but i also want it to feel convenient well you need to make sure you have an invoicing system that's in place that feels convenient you don't want it to be where they have to do this and log in here or yeah. you know, maybe your signature signing you don't want it to be like you gotta sign this and send this back and check this and cross this to you want it to feel convenient then you need to create a convenient signature signing process because that's gonna that's gonna anchor into that's gonna hit further solidify your brand in people's mind mm -hmm. at every touch point that they have with you maybe you have a service-based business and you said that you want it to feel uh affordable right uh you you may have this goal that you want to make off of each cut each customer a thousand dollars well you can't package every you can't package it at a thousand you have to break that down where they're spending 20 100 with you at a time so you have to break down the services that you're getting now the lifetime value of the customer may be a thousand but how do i uh take my products and position my products in such a way yeah. that they get this product and then after that they get this product and then after that there's a there's a customer journey ladder that's happening so mm -hmm. that they're spending their money little by little over a process of time i'm just trying to help you wrap your mind around it but mm -hmm. it's ultimately a question that you have to ask yourself what are some systems some operations some processes what do i need to have in place do i need to have somebody answering the phone what do i need to do because yeah. i need this brand to be solidified yeah. And I know some of you all may be thinking, well, listen, I don't I'm not trying to do a theme park or I'm not I, you know, I don't have a physical product or whatever the case may be, because, you know, we the, the Internet has leveled the playing field for a lot of people. Right. But there's still systems and processes that you need even if you have an online business. Right. There's still a funnel 
right? There's still, like uh, I just said, there's a value ladder that you want to take them to get to their desired outcome. So there's still a process. You just can't say, well, um, this doesn't, this doesn't uh, apply connect with you, right? No, th this does. Ho I'm hoping you can see the connection. So think about it. Like, yeah, you may not have a theme park, but you, you're doing something. You're offering some kind of service or product, and it's a connection to where, okay, I still want them to feel this certain way when they receive this email or phone call or this DM or whatever the case may be. So, no, that's right. that's, that's good. It's still applicable. Like, even mm -hmm. restaurants, there are restaurants who will make sure when you leave, okay, maybe they're not a theme park and there's like a souvenir shop and they can go buy all this swag and merch. Right which I'm sure it applies to a lot of artists. If you're an artist and you're creative in mm -hmm. some kind of way, I'm pretty sure that people want to experience your creativity in a continued fashion. So there, 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 there has to be some type of souvenir, but even, even in certain restaurants, they will lead, make sure they give you a peppermint on the way yeah. out. Yeah. You know, that's branded with their logo on it. Yeah. And so that you throw it in your little cup holder and you look later and you see their logo there and you pop in the mint or whatever. This is what I'm leaving you with. This is what, you know, this is what you can keep of me even after this experience is over. Yeah. Right. Even a, even a simple phrase as it was my pleasure to serve you. Right. We all know where that come from. Right. It's my pleasure to serve you. Right. That. Stuff like that, it enhances the experience. And now I want to go back. Like, well, are you was pleased to serve me? What? I mean, you you feel special. Like, oh, wait a minute, I got a smile every 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 stop and checkpoint. I got a smile. I got a smile when I when I when I pulled up to the drive through. I got a smile, and when I put up to the window, I got a, you know what I'm saying. Like, it's that's that perfect. experience. I, you didn't, we didn't we wasn't gonna introduduce the True Cat, but <laughs> True Cat who is the founder of Chick Fil A. I, to me, all of that, people love Chick-fil-A. They yeah. think they like the food, the creativity of the food, the sandwich, how they compress it and yeah. moisturize it to a certain degree. And that's the creativity of it and the experience. You're like, oh, it's always, but it's always good all the time. But you don't realize that when you pull up, it's multiple lanes in the drive through So you yeah. have multiple options. When you pull up, somebody is actually standing out. Matter of fact, I don't want you to wait till you get to the window. I'm going to have somebody take your order here so that we can, by the time you get to the window, we have increased our time that we have to make your order. Yeah. If we wait till you get to the window, then from the window to around here is not that long. But yeah. if I get your order way back here, right? So now what system, what operational tool that they need to have? They give them some kind of tablet or some type of mm -hmm. phone. They can stand outside and they can take your order right there and not just take the order and relay, relay the message. They can go ahead and take the payment right there as well. Right. So I need to, oh man, if in order to bring this brand that we working on for Chick-fil-A to life, I have to make sure that there is some type of device so that they can, that's operations. Yeah. There's yeah. A, a, a something over your head where it's covering you. So you're out of the sun or out of the rain as you're making your order. You don't realize why do I feel so great because you wasn't in the rain as you ordered your food because you the sun wasn't beating down on you because they they bought this tent or these, you know, overhead. Like all of that goes into the brand. Yeah, the fries should be on point. Yeah, the, the food should be on point. That's the creativity of the matter. And right. I know that creatives love making sure that the creative is together. But all the rest of the stuff is why you really, really, really love Chick Fil A. I'm telling yeah. you, it's what it is. Not just because it tastes good, right? It, uh -huh. It's it's an experience, right. and it, and it's a very, very strong brand. So mm -hmm. I want to go back and recap before we conclude this episode, and like really make it cohesive, right? Yeah. Yeah. So oftentimes when we talk about branding, uh, we're thinking about the use of colors, fonts. And all that kind of stuff. Logo, um, the vi the logo. visual, the visual aspects of the brand. We're thinking visually, right? But all those things are really complements. Mm -hmm. the they, yes. they, they, they kind of because again, we said with McDonald's, if I want you to be happy and I want it to be kid friendly and I want it to be fun, then I'm picking logos, fonts, and and all those kind of mood boards to complement this feeling, this right. experience that I want people right. to have, operational experience I want people mm -hmm. to have. And that derives from the core values. Everything you just said, kid-friendly, uh, family-oriented, like those are core values. So every brand needs core values because from those core values, you're going to build the rest of the brand. Right. It's right. going to complement that. All right. 
Exactly. You know, we talked about Ruth Chris earlier. You have, I want people to feel like a professional atmosphere, a status, uh, right? People to celebrate here, right? Uh, then you're gonna have white and bold and red wine color that they mm -hmm. use in their color scheme because right. they want you to be giving toast amongst each other and exactly. you're going to see white gloves and tablecloths yeah. and servers and things like that and you when you look at our website and on our commercials because overall i'm trying to give you a dining experience a dining customized luxury experience and so the fonts that they use some bold fonts mm -hmm. you know and then they have some cursive stuff as well to in insinuate a uh, luxury and then uh like i said the red wine kind of alludes you in the wine feel with the with the steak and the wine and the fish and the wine they're trying to get all of those things are complementing the original core values and the operational experience that they want to deliver OK, so again, we said the brand can be broken down into um, uh, experience and operations. Brand can be broken down into experience and operations. So when we talk about experience and core values, we have foundation, the mission, the vision. Right. When we talk about operations. We have ambiance, environment, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So these are some things that you have to take into consideration. So if you're a creative entrepreneur, I may encourage you to. Man, take those <laughs> those values right there in two yeah. different ways, especially when you're talking personal and company. You might want to like build a company by itself and a personal by itself because you really, really need to make sure this stuff is cohesive. Definitely. And listen, and don't don't be overwhelmed. You don't got to do everything at once, right? I know we we hitting y'all with a lot, and y'all like, what? I didn't even thought about that. I got it, but but no, seriously, you do want to be intentional about the things that you are putting in place and about the experience and how it operates and how it whatnot because that that it really affects everything right we all know people that have some great things but because some of other stuff is lacking and missing we haven't returned we haven't been back <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm like mm, no nah, they're not gonna get my money again um because they, they they did not take into consideration how i would feel or they didn't put these things in place so that's all we're encouraging to do is like when you are thinking about your brand, you have to be very intentional about how you want your customer to think, feel, you, what, what, how do you, what do you want them to experience so that they can return, so that they can refer, so they can do all these things that you can continue to generate revenue. Revenue. Because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, we here at the Mind of My Creative Business podcast want creative entrepreneurs to lean into the business side. And yeah. part of the business side is the branding. And part of the branding is a little bit beyond the, the fonts, the colors, yeah. the logos. It's actually yeah. those things are complements to the brand. Get down to the root of your brand. And from Ron's perspective, get your strategy together, get your experience together. But from my perspective, get your operations together. How is this thing going to flow? Yeah. I don't care if your food is busting. If it took all day, your car machine wasn't working, <laughs> this or that. I, I won't be back. I won't be back. All you know right. So all right. that stuff has to be together. Again, a personal brand is built around the life of the founder. So that's where you'll find those core values and how you want people to feel about you personally and what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. A company brand is built around, uh, it's outside the life of the founder. It's built yeah. around mission. This company, this entity in and of itself has a mission to fulfill, right? And, and that mission, there's values there. And in order to fulfill that mission, we have to operate a certain way. And I hope that this is really sitting and resonating at home simply and one of the things that ron said ron said you have to be intentional that's it you don't have to be overwhelmed just mm -hmm. be intentional and i actually have a slogan uh and, and a phrase um an affirmation if you will that i like to recite with you before we get out of the episode before we get out ron you have any special people that you want to thank yes i want to thank our case studies steve jobs and and walt disney for allowing for us to speak about them and just the phenomenal things that they did with their brands right so clap it up for them um, and i also want to thank you our viewers and our listeners right you could have spent your time doing anything but anywhere but you spent it here with us so we thank you for that 
Um, along with thanking you, we want to encourage you join our Creatives Corner. If you go to our website, mmcbpodcast.com, subscribe to our newsletter. Once you subscribe to the newsletter, we're going to invite you to our Facebook community with other creative entrepreneurs to where we all are growing in our creative entrepreneurship and they're on that same road and path so we can encourage and motivate one another and glean from one another. So join that. Once again, wherever you're listening to this, whether it's Apple, Spotify, like, leave a review, comment, share. Same thing if you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, share, and subscribe so that we can get those numbers up. So that's all I got. We want to help more creative entrepreneurs and yes. we want to continue to expose them to these eight figure. Uh, this episode, it was just Ron and I, and we said we want to bring in eight figure and beyond. So we we went, you know, with people who we couldn't technically interview. But oftentimes here on this particular podcast, we're bringing in real people, contemporary people who are six, seven and eight figures. And you can hear from them on how they did it all, the strategy they had the structure they have, the self-development tools. And so we want you to be able to take those things as you're building your brand or scaling your brand. And if you're not a creative entrepreneur, like Ron said, like it and share it with somebody who is because this is some good stuff. Now, I was talking about this mantra and this affirmation. Now, the way this affirmation goes, I want you guys to repeat after me. Ron, we ready? We ready. All right. All right, so I want you to repeat after me. All it takes. All it takes. Is intention. Is intention. Consistency. Consistency. And laser focus. And laser focus. To mind my creative business. To mind my creative business. Ooh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Ooh, it does. It sounds (laughs) really good. So listen, on that note, we will see y'all again. Don't forget, we are here on Mondays as early as 6 a.m. EST. So looking forward to seeing you all. Well, we won't see y'all. Y'all see us. <laughs> or, or y'all see us or hear us. Either way, check us out. Peace. Peace.